So, like, what are you even going to say today? I don't even know, because, like, I'm happy the Leafs won and everything, but the Leafs haven't played the Canucks enough so you could develop a true hatred for them and relish in their suffering. Yeah, like, there's got to be a German word for this. Let's go! Why not? The Toronto Maple Leafs! I guess my brand is a yell and scream. Ah, damn, I don't script these. Are the Leafs all right? So what you get is from the heart. Welcome to LFR. Ziggy, screw the Canucks, am I right? No, I know, I'm starting to feel bad too. I'm starting to feel real bad. You're incapable of hate. That's a lot of drool on the sleeve. Leafs win! Five to one? Over the Vancouver Canucks! I'm so sorry! The Leafs won seven to three last game and I was very happy about it, but I did warn them that they will not get that same Vancouver Canucks team again. And I was absolutely right because they were worse! Like, look, we all agree, even though they beat the Leafs earlier this season, based on their record, based on how they look on paper, the Ottawa Senators are not good, right? They may become good, but right now, they are not good. But on any given night, they try. Or maybe I shouldn't say the Canucks aren't trying. When you step on an NHL ice surface, you are trying. And I'm not saying it's something that should be celebrated, but every single time the Canucks get scored on, they look like they dropped their own birthday cake face down. I think most of us saw the playoff bubble, we were impressed by the Canucks, but based on the offseason that they had, we all thought they would take a step backward. But I don't think any of us thought that we'd be able to see the defeat in their eyes after like a dozen games. The Leafs outscored them 12 to 4 in two games. Leaf fans, you're obviously going to enjoy this, but Canucks fans, I hope you stick around because this might be therapeutic for you. Let's talk about the game. The Canucks put themselves shorthanded seven times last game. Five were a penalty kill, two were penalties that were negated because the Leafs scored on a delayed penalty call, and the checking from behind thing on Kerfoot wasn't even called. And if you're going to have a chance of beating the Leafs, whose power play has been lethal so far this season, that's got to be priority number one, staying out of the box. So naturally, Alex Edler takes a slashing call on William Nylander like three minutes in. On the ensuing power play, Mitch Marner gives the puck to Wayne Simmons down low to set up Austin Matthews for the imminent death boom boom pass. And as a result, Jordy Ben completely panics and gets down onto all fours, which I, I can't blame him, that's what I would do, involuntarily by falling down because I suck at hockey, but that's another story. So Simmons, with the pass probably taken away, looks at his options. Here's the difference a little bit of patience and less than a second can make. Here's what Braden Holtby's giving you. I don't know if I like that enough. Ah, that's much better. We all aboard the Wayne train again! And the Leafs are up 1-0 early. And did you see Austin Matthews' reaction? Just the pure joy. I know the Leafs got some veterans recently, but this goal was a reminder that the Leafs are still a young team. You can tell from every Wayne Simmons goal, the Jason Spezza hat trick, Joe Thornton's first as a Leaf, that every goal by a Leaf over 30 is considered a miracle! I've always talked about the electric shock that someone scoring their first career NHL goal sends through a locker room, but apparently, if you're old, it's better. So anyway, the Leafs have a 1-0 lead less than 5 minutes in because of a power play. The Canucks took a penalty at the beginning of this game, they were very undisciplined last game, and it cost them. So, how do they improve after this? Alex Edler takes a penalty on the same guy! He trips William Nylander. And if I recall correctly, that is three consecutive penalties on Edler because he took a slash on Jason Spezza at the end of last game. Lucky for the Canucks, the Leafs don't score on this one. Then with about six minutes to go in the first period, a goal that made me scream out loud. Literally, I screamed twice. Oh my god. Oh my god! You don't sit for those goals. Zach Hyman and Mitch Marner with an awkward zone entry that kind of worked. They decided we were going to pirouette them to death. Marner caught up in a weird, very Mitch Marner puck battle where he does this spin-off thing sort of gets the pass, and I felt real bad for Jalen Chatfield. Because he sees the puck awkwardly squirt loose, it's a loose puck, and for a fraction of a second he thinks, I'm gonna go get that. Until he sees Austin Matthews flying in like a screaming eagle! Looking like Ron Burgundy jumping into the panda enclosure. I immediately regret this decision. The rest is history. Matthews dekes through Chatfield's stick like it's a straight up drill and roofs it on Braden Holtby. Filthy, nasty, disgusting, he didn't even have the heart to celebrate. It's 2 nothing. Not even going to talk about the intermission. There's no need to prolong this for Canucks fans. Second period, the most talked about non-offside ever. Chatfield. I, I thought this was offside. I thought he touched it. I was so confused until I saw the replay, but apparently he let it go. And he very shouldn't have. Because that awkward hesitation at the offensive blue line allows the Leafs to break out. They get into the Canucks zone. But... The Canucks clear it, but the Leafs get the puck back, and then they attack, which turns into a three-on-two with both Canucks defenders back. I don't look at that as Chatfield's fault, really. I see how he contributed, but... Marner do a streaking Miko Lettinen sick pass to Zach Hyman, tape to tape, and good battle by Hyman, too. He earned that goal. Very Zach Hyman goal, about five inches from the goal line. 
three nothing. The Canucks need something, anything to get going, and they get it. JT Miller scores. The Canucks are on the board. I can't believe you're reviewing that, Sheldon. That's mean. And unfortunately, Nils Hoglander is very offside. He he took like one stride and he's offside. And I'll tell you what went wrong here. That never would have happened to me. Nope. Here's the problem. Hoglander is too good at skating. Can't go outside if you fall down and throw your back out before you even cross the blue line, huh? So the Canucks head to second intermission with nothing to show for it. Early in the third, the Canucks are in the Leafs zone, but the Leafs manage to clear it out. And then it's a foot race for the puck between Quinn Hughes and Zach Hyman. Now, I love Zach Hyman, but Every Canucks fan should feel good about that race. I know it's Zach Hyman, but it's also Quinn freaking Hughes. But both of them let up on their puck pursuit because Braden Holtby decides to play it. Straight to, and I mean straight to, Austin Matthews right on the tape. Matthews bobbles it for a second, settles it down, and throws it five hole before Holtby even saw the mustache. And then Holtby just shaking his head and staring daggers after the goal. Now. I'm not going to pretend to be in Braden Holpe's head. I don't know if he was shaking his head at himself or at a teammate. There seemed to be some speculation on the broadcast and on Twitter he was shaking his head at maybe some of his teammates or for the fact that Matthews was in all alone. Now, if he was shaking his head at himself, no harm, no foul. I get it. You made the mistake. But if he was shaking his head at JT Miller, and we'll get to him in a second, bro, you gave the puck to Matthews. What did you think? was gonna happen. What are you mad Miller wasn't there to make up for your obvious mistake? Freeze it! Throw it behind the net! Do anything but what you did! Even if throwing it behind the neck leads to a fire drill, it's still better than a clear-cut breakaway for Austin Matthews. What I think he might have been mad about is JT Miller got just destroyed by Matthews in the previous game. And that's because a Canucks defenseman, I think it was Quinn Hughes, went for the pinch and he's like, don't worry, I'm back, I got this. And you're gonna defend Austin Matthews like this? This Canucks team uh, clearly has good players, clearly. But they are so completely out of sync with each other. The growing pains from the beginning of the season, lots of turnover, I get that. But they're obviously still so prevalent on this team. It's it's brutal and it's starting to be ugly to watch because they seem to be at each other's throats a little bit. Lost in all this talk, Matthews with his 10th of the season because he's goofy. And then less than two minutes later, the Leafs with the puck, Miko Lettinen at the offensive blue line. I'm going to show you a picture and I want you to tell me what you notice about this Leafs power play that's different. All right, here it is. Miko Lettinen with the puck at the point. What is different about this power play formation? What is different about that? I'll give you till three, two, one. The difference is there's five Canucks out there and this isn't a power play. Oh my God. Letton floats it on Wayne Simmons with the perfect tip. Huge selly for a five nothing goal. If it was anyone else, he might've got punched in the face, but it's Wayne Simmons. Don't open that door. This game has fully gotten away from the Vancouver Canucks and oh, the defenseman that Wayne Simmons was battling with in front was Jalen Chatfield. What an awful, very no fun, no fun at all night that he had. Now admittedly, I didn't know who Chatfield was before these first couple games. I knew I had heard the name before, and that is because Jalen Chatfield was on the Utica Comets when the Toronto Marlies played them in the first round of the Calder Cup playoffs in 2018, when the Marlies would go on to win the Calder Cup. And funny enough, Toronto was the last team that Jalen Chatfield scored against professionally in April of 2018 against the Marlies. Now I'm not saying that as an insult. For this guy to not have a professional goal since April 2018, there's obviously something the Canucks organization likes about him as a defenseman. I just hope Canucks fans aren't too hard on him this morning because that, that's just a nightmare game. It's a nightmare. That's gonna be the worst game of his career. Like, he cannot top that. And he did make a couple mistakes of his own. He did, but I look at all those goals and everything he was on the ice for, and I just go, team wasn't exactly great around him. Yeah, once you're in the National Hockey League, you're thrown to the wolves and you gotta fend for yourself, but for a guy who hasn't even hit double-digit NHL games, it sure seems like the Canucks are putting him in a position to fail. This just doesn't strike me as a team that's playing for each other right now. Late in the third, Jake Munson takes a penalty. It was a bit of a late call, but I, I don't know, fair game. You're up 5 nothing, dude. Brock Bester scores on the power play with just over two minutes left, ruining the Freddie Anderson shutout bid. Sad for Freddie, would have been nice to see him get one. He must have been bored back there all night, but he also had the offside goal taken back and it's like yeah it's a shutout but is it i would have happily called it a shutout but goalies are weird and i wonder how he would have perceived it and the leafs dismantle the vancouver canucks 5-1 12-4 over the past two games and oh guess what the leafs get to play them again the one point of concern after the game you saw wayne simmons getting his finger frozen he didn't play it was about the final five minutes 
I'm not too worried about it. There wasn't an update given. I, I don't know why I grabbed my phone right now, like I'm gonna read it. Now, uh, I just shot a few clips talking about, ah, oh, Simmons probably out as a precaution. Um, Elliot Friedman tweeting in the middle of me shooting this, not liking what I'm hearing on Wayne Simmons. Could be six weeks. Just brutal. Was having such a strong season in return home. What? I thought it was just his pinky finger, uh, broken hand maybe? I don't even know. I'm sure you'll get an update before this video is uploaded. That's awful, man. Well, okay, so now the question becomes who gets that spot? I'll start the question segment there, I guess. My guess is you could just put Mikheyev back in that slot because he was there for a few games. He's really struggling though. He's really, like he's not even, it's not that the puck isn't going in. It's just, I don't even think he's playing well. Hyman would obviously work there, but he's doing so well with Matthews and Marner, I wouldn't split that up. So with Simmons out there in need of a right winger, this could be a golden opportunity for Joey Anderson. I don't know if they throw him on the second line, but I think he'll get in the lineup. Putting Jason Spezza is the sort of thing I would like to try for a few shifts in a game, not for six weeks. And I'm not going to throw Thornton and Robertson into that position because I don't even know when they're going to be back yet. Oh man, that's brutal. What a way to... I was so happy all video. There was a rumor a couple of weeks back that the Leafs were looking into offensive help. Uh, they're 9-2-1, and one, so I don't really see the need to make a trade, but boy, that's a lot of injuries up front. Oh, Wayne! No! Ugh, questions. Before we get to questions, on a far more positive note, uh, Donovan Bennett narrating an excellent feature on Black History Month for Sportsnet, Hockey Night in Canada. You can check that out if you haven't already. That's wonderful. Are the Leafs really this good or the Canucks are really this bad? Vin, I did a lot of thinking about that question and my answer is absolutely. No, okay, one, one thing that I think has been overblown is that, well, the Leafs hadn't played the Canucks until now and maybe the Habs aren't the juggernaut that we thought they were because they beat up on the Canucks for all those games. You can only play the teams that are in front of you. You can't penalize the Leafs or the Habs for being in the division they're in. And it should speak volumes that four of the top five teams in the NHL right now are from the Atlantic division. It's certainly not to make an excuse for the Leafs' lack of playoff success in recent years. It's not like the Blue Jackets are in the Atlantic division or the Capitals, but it's a really good division. I think your eyes are right. The Leafs look really good. The Canucks look really bad. That's why a really good team beat up a really bad team for the past two games. How do you feel after falling down the stairs? <laughs> yeah, last night to cheer up Canucks fans, I tweeted that I fell down the stairs, which is true, by the way. Sore. Is Ilya Mikheyev close to losing a consistent spot in the lineup? Boy, is this question taking a turn. No. He's too valuable to the penalty kill, and this isn't a guy who's bad. This is a guy who's struggling. Uh, I think they're going to use him in Wayne's spot on the second line. I don't really see what other choice they have. Maybe VC? No. I... I was about to say Kerfoot. No, that doesn't make any sense. I, I think it's going to end up being Mikheyev, and he's going to have to succeed. And he's going to have to do some of the things that Wayne does. He's got a battle in front. He's got a big enough body. He's obviously strong enough. Who's up next? Who's up next? The Leafs need someone to step up into Wayne Train's role. Who's it going to be? Mikheyev's got to step up. He got that deal for a reason. He's a good player. He needs to be able to step into this spot and perform. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Man, I think this is the saddest I've ever been at the end of a video where the least won 5-1. Except for that one year where I wanted them to finish last, but I don't think they won any games 5-1. <laughs>